Hey, it's Mario here, and I recently talked to one of my friends about the psychology of weight loss, about the psychology of exercise, and he asked me, what is one of the biggest things you see with your clients that they do wrong when they first start out? If they've been leading an unhealthy lifestyle, they haven't been taking care of themselves for years, now all of a sudden, I mean, Basically, it's a critical moment. There's a lot of sense of urgency. There's a lot of motivation to change. What is one of the biggest mistakes that I've seen with my clients? So it was a really good question. Actually, I had to think about this a lot. And um, I, after some brainstorming, I was thinking, and I came up, and I think this really stands out a lot, and I see this happen all the time, and that, that empathy gap. You know, the empathy gap, cognitive bias that we have as human beings from psychology, uh, it's very well defined, the hot and cold empathy gap. So what does that really mean? How does that apply to weight loss? Well, let's say you wanna start a diet. You feel really, really motivated. Your current state of mind is like, okay, I'm motivated, I'm gonna crush it. I wanna go super aggressive, I wanna lose it as fast as possible. I wanna get the fat off as soon as possible. And you set up a diet and you go super low calorie. You go like a crash diet, you go 1,400 calories, 1,500 calories, I mean, and anywhere like 10 times your body weight in pounds under that in calories for a guy is super, super low. And um, if you start off with that, it might be okay. I mean, in the moment, in your current emotional state, it feels like that it's okay, you know, that you will be able to do that because you cannot, uh, you don't have that empathy. You can't predict how you're gonna feel, let's say two weeks from now on that caloric desk or a month from now or like, let's say two months from now when it gets really, really hard. And that is the empathy gap because we can't really know what our emotional state will be, let's say two months from now, and we don't really relate to that. It's like a different type of person. And this is a huge problem when it comes to dieting, when it comes to exercising, because people who haven't done anything will all of a sudden want to do everything at once. You know, let's change 50 different habits. Let's throw away all the junk food out of the house. Let's uh, instantly start transitioning the diet from, let's say, 60% kind of all over the place to let's ban, like all clean 99% of the time, super high protein, new taste. Like even your, even your taste buds require about four weeks to get used to new food. If you've been eating highly palatable, super, super tasty foods. I mean, it takes about four weeks for your, for your taste buds and for your taste to actually acquire and get to love the new types of food. So as soon as you make that cut, if you make it instantly, I mean, it's gonna go crazy. And often people, I mean, that's why people uh, fail on their diets because they go too hard too soon at once. And uh, that's one big issue here. I mean, especially if you go super, super low calorie, I mean, you will lose a bunch of weight. I mean, of course, Caloric deficit works, I mean, we know that works, and if you get your protein, if you exercise, but it's not a long-term sustainable uh, thing. I mean, you cannot sustain this effort, and really need to be aware of this uh, empathy gap as well with our training session. You know, we think like, well, oh, I'm gonna, just gonna crush it, you know, and you go to failure in every set. You can't really, uh, even short-term, you can't really feel how you, that's gonna reflect on the end of your workout where you simply, let's say, fry yourself in the first couple of sets, you're super, super exhausted, and then you ruin the whole workout because there's that gap between you don't know what you're gonna feel like. And it, it's really interesting as human beings, this cognitive bias is, is limiting and it's so many different ways. So one thing how we can battle this is with proper planning, number one, and the, prop, and the second point is really, really important is to takes things one step at a time. And I'm a big proponent of this. I mean, of course you can jump in the deep end of the pool and try to like get out of there. I mean, it has been done. I'm, I've been doing that very, very successfully as myself. And that's kind of the approach that I, I used to do in the past. Let's say you want to transition from someone who is like eating let's say 60, 70% of your diet, you don't even know what you're eating. It's like all over the place. But now you wanna to transition to, let's say, base your diet mainly on whole, healthy, unprocessed foods 90% of the time, and sometimes you wanna treat yourself with some uh, sweets or whatever your favorite dessert is. Well, there's two ways to do that. You can just do the approach where it's like, okay, let's go YOLO and let's just stop everything and just transition to this. But also you can take it step by step. You can break down the process, you can baby step that by, let's say, well, I'm gonna do two days of like eating these types of foods, see how I respond, or I'm gonna do, let's say, one solid meal. This is one of the approaches that I use with my clients and the one I did in the past. It's like, I do my breakfast, and I remember, or my first meal of the day, if you're doing intermittent fasting, I'm just gonna do that meal, and I'm gonna make it as healthy and as solid, as unprocessed and super, super, uh, dense with nutrition as possible. And then I'm gonna leave the dinner, okay, whatever, you know, I don't wanna bother too much if my life is too hectic. And 
that breakfast will slowly turn into, well, damn, I mean, if I can do this breakfast awesome and every single day, then I can do the second meal great and then I eventually do the third meal great and then you have yourself a really awesome diet. Because as I said, it takes even for your taste buds about four weeks to get used to a new taste. So people will say, oh shit, man, I hate vegetables. I don't wanna eat any vegetables. Well, look, I mean, you just haven't eaten enough of that of those vegetables to get used to it. And tastes change. I mean, remember as a as a kid, you probably didn't like certain things. I mean, for example, in, in my diet, I remember I hated mushrooms. Like any side of mushroom, I was like disgusted. And now, I mean, I love to add mushrooms to anything I make, basically. And I, it's, it's one of my favorite foods. If I just simply as an as an add-on food to get the proper nutrition. And one big part of this is, of course, because I've educated myself what the mushrooms have in size in terms of nutrition. But the second thing is that my taste buds have changed over time and I've basically become um, kind of like adjusted to eating whole healthy unprocessed foods. And if you've been eating processed food and junky food, super, super tasty food for your whole life for, for at least the last couple of years, you might not be even accustomed to eating these healthy foods. So it takes some time. So give yourself some time and baby step the process and start adding more vegetables to your meals. Start adding more protein to get accustomed to how that feels, how that feels in your stomach. Even your stomach will take some time to get adjusted. And often with these diets, people when they suddenly like make a switch, and change all of their foods, their stomach goes crazy a little bit because it's not used to processing all these different types of foods. And it takes some time to get used to that. So the big idea here that I want to take you, that I want you to take out of this video is that you simply try to a little bit, don't fall into this cognitive bias and try to empathize with yourself in the future. So don't go too hard too soon. Diet on as much of calories as you can. Eat as much food as you can in your diet and then you can always cut down. You can always go lower. So set up your realistic targets for weight loss. Don't go under that. So as I always say, I mean, there are certain realistic targets. So let's say you're a guy who's above 16% body fat, someone who is, uh, you can't see your abs, you're, you have a decent amount of body fat, or even if you're in that range of 20, 30% body fat, you can comfortably lose about 1.5% of your body weight per week. That's very comfortable, healthy, a decent target to aim at. If you're somewhere between that 12, 16, 17% body fat, about 1% of your body weight per week is a very, very good target to aim at. And then as soon as you go closer and closer to that 10% mark where you see your abs and you wanna go leaner than that, then it's probably a good idea to go even below that 1% of body weight per week to about half a percent of your body weight per week in a just simply weight loss. Of course, how that's gonna partition, whether it's gonna be just fat or muscle or other as well, I mean, shifts in glycogen, depends on your exercise plan, depends if you're doing uh, carbohydrate refeeds and all these things, weight can fluctuate a lot, but again, if you do these figures, you're gonna be in that healthy range and try to baby step that. Don't go super, super hard in the beginning, I mean, of course, if you're someone who's 30% plus body fat, you can go super, super aggressive, but that will still fit in this figure of 1.5% of body weight per week. That's a very, very decent figure. You can go even to 2%, let's say if you're extremely obese and if you're just like, okay, I gotta get this done. Um, you can set up your diet to be super, super aggressive in the beginning, but then backtrack it afterwards. But the big idea is that Think about how that's gonna feel in the future. It's not gonna be as easy as you think right now, so prepare yourself a little bit for that. Think about how am I gonna feel after this caloric deficit for like the next uh, 12 weeks. You know, in that week 10, anticipate that it's gonna be hard. And that's something that I don't see a lot of people being real with themselves. They think that their current emotional state that they're in is gonna last forever. It's not, it's gonna fluctuate. And same thing happens with your diet, same thing happens with your exercise plan. There are always fluctuations. You sit, some days you feel like you're gonna crush it in the gym, some days you feel like crap. And it's completely normal to anticipate these fluctuations and know that you can't really have that empathy for your, for your future self, but you can kind of tell yourself, well, I might feel like that, so you're ready when that time comes, and you know that it's a normal part of the process, because the process ultimately is what you need to execute. It's not about any result, it's not about getting the six pack, it's not about dropping the weight, it's really changing your lifestyle and becoming the person 
that you can be, your, your ultimate potential. And this is also one of the biggest things that I see, I mean, just to add a little bit on uh, this uh, empathy gap phenomenon here, is that I see a lot of people thinking, they're, they're kind of thinking still don't want to give up their old behavior, their old habits, their old lifestyle. They still think, well, if I just do this for like six months or if I just do this for a year, I can go back to what I used to do. And the reality is that you can never go back. There is no such thing as going back. If you want to be healthy and if you've been living in an unhealthy lifestyle, you can't come back to that. If you come back to that, just you're going to wipe out all your progress. And that's one thing that you have to think to yourself and commit to is that you're going to be doing this if you really want to be on the journey, if you really want to become the best version of yourself. You're going to be doing this until the day you die. And that's a commitment that you have to realize for yourself. Because I see a lot of people, I mean, even thinking in, in, a, in a course of a year, that's not, a, I mean, one year passes by really, really fast. And one year, even if you do everything perfect, it's gonna obviously improve the situation, but if you return back to your old habits, if you return back to your old self, if you're not willing to give up that self-image of the person who is just going YOLO in life and not really taking care of themselves, you're not gonna go very, very far. And that's eventually gonna backtrack and it's all those results that you got in a year will just go back. And this is what we see in a lot of weight loss studies is that people successfully lose weight and they slowly start to creep up uh, with their uh, weight back. And from some uh, data that I've seen out there, I mean, there's of course slowdown of metabolism with every kilo of weight you lose, with every two pounds that you lose, there's about 30 calories of like less that you expand. It's not a lot, but actually what happens is that when people lose that weight, every, uh, <laughs> every time there's like an incremental increase in how much they eat. So they, they start eating about 100 calories more every like every month or every, every second month and then this just simply adds up and they return from, let's say an intake, if you at the end of the diet were at 1800 calories, within a year people are eating back, they're eating 2800 calories in a day and just binging and eating even more than that. So, I mean, the point is that you, you have to think of this as a, like a long-term lifestyle change. It doesn't mean that you have to be in a very uh, low hypocaloric diet all the time, but to maintain your weight, you will have to actually change your behavior and change your habits. There's no way around that. There's no way around eating healthy food and basing your diet primarily on, on healthy food. So the better thing to do is just simply get accustomed to that, make the decision, pull the trigger, problem solved, no, done, right? So commit to that decision, make it a part of your self-image, attach it to who you are as a person, and you will go very, very far. And if it's an identity-based decision, based, I'm the kind of person that lives this kind of life, I'm the kind of person who can hold a promise to myself. If I made a promise to myself that I will eat healthy and that I will stick to this lifestyle, I can uphold that promise because I'm that kind of person, right? To attach it to your identity, attach it to who you are, your sense of self, and you will, you will succeed in the long run. So uh, I'm gonna leave you with this message here. Let me know in the comments below, have you ever experienced the uh, unconsciously, I mean, now looking back at your life, have you experienced the empathy gap? Oftentimes because you're thinking that something is gonna be either better or worse than it, because your current emotional state and then when you actually got there, it was like, what the hell is going on? This is so, this feels so different. And that is one thing, I mean, we, we never have, to, as human beings, we have to remind ourselves that our decisions are actually influenced a lot by our current emotional state and that's what makes us very, very interesting creatures as well, you know, it's not all bad. So, hope you guys enjoyed, as I said, let me know in the comments below your experience with the empathy gap, with the cognitive bias. Aside from that, make sure to hit that subscribe button below to support the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.